Gangster John Staffa headed the local mob for years, but a huge federal indictment bolstered by 2,000 audio tapes took him down. On tonight's Mob Talk, Fox 29's Dave Schratweiser and the Inquirer's George Anastasia look back at the case. <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of Mob Talk. I'm Dave Stratweiser. And I'm George Anastasia with the Philadelphia Inquirer. All right, George, 15 years ago this month, mob boss John Stanford, convicted in federal court, gets five life terms. One of the most sensational racketeering trials, I think, in mob history in the city. All right, George, we're standing outside the old mob clubhouse, the Joey Merlino clubhouse uh, back at 6th and Catherine here. Right. Uh, back in the day where one of the most uh, infamous murders in mob history in Philadelphia happened. Yeah, that, that was part of the trial. It was in August of 1993, Joey and Mikey Chang are walking back to the clubhouse and they're gunned down right up the street here. And the shooters were John Vesey and Phil Coletti, both of whom became witnesses in that racketeering trial. Okay, let's talk about that case. John Stanford, boss of the mob, Sicilian. Uh, seven other colleagues in that case, mobsters and mob associates, right. uh, slam dunk case for the government. They won on all levels. Well, one of the interesting things about that case was, it, it, people forget, there were 2,000 tape-recorded conversations. The government had put a bug inside Salavina's law office in Camden, and Stanford, according to the authorities, was going there regularly to have mob meetings. So this was a mob war between the staff and Molino faction that was picked up on audio from the get-go. And all of those tapes were very, very germane to the investigation, and I think hundreds were played at the trial. Right. And we heard some tapes and some discussion about all the plots to kill Joey Merlino. They wanted to blow him up with a bomb, shoot him, do all kinds of things to him. One of the more infamous was Stanford talking to Sergio Battaglia about they were going to set up a meeting where they were going to kill Joey, Mikey, and Gate Luchabella. And they talked about cutting Gate Luchabella's tongue out, putting it in an envelope, and sending it to his wife. That was one of the first tapes that was played. And the jury was spellbound by all of this kind of stuff. And their staff and the others sitting at the defense table and you know as, as lawyers often say you can't cross-examine a tape it is what it is and again and again and again the prosecution hammered away with that stuff and I remember when that came out about sending his tongue in a package yeah. and, and that you could see the wind go out of the jury a little bit there just like you could when John Vesey was on the stand one of the key witnesses in that case he hammered Stanford told the truth had the jury uh, mesmerized, yeah. if you will. Talk a little bit about Vizi. We've talked a lot about him lately, yeah. but a little bit about his value in that trial. Yeah, I mean, I think of the witnesses, there was Vizi, there was Coletti, there was Rosario Bolocchi. I think Vizi was the best because he was as if he was standing on a street corner telling a story. So you had John Vizi who's saying, we did this, here's why we did it, here's who told us to do, do it. And then you had all of these tapes where you, you, you didn't have to paint a picture of Stanford. Stanford, in his own words, was painting a picture of himself. Mm -hmm. Cold, ruthless, uh, wanton violence, all of that, it was a, a big avalanche rolling down a hill. There was no way anybody was getting out from underneath this. Right. You and I were in the courtroom every single day, like yeah. sitting in the front row, and I could see the steam building up inside John Stanford during that trial. You could see at some point he was going to pop because he knew it was coming down. Yeah, and I, I think in his heart of hearts, he knew he had done this to himself. I mean, that's the beauty of a tape-recorded conversation. That kind of evidence is irrefutable. You are who you are. And, and the other thing people forget is those conversations not only offer an insight into the war that was going on, but they offer an insight into the whole Cosa Nostra and who these guys were and the petty bickering between the Merlino faction, the little Americans he called them, and the Stanford-led group, which they called them the Greaseballs. You had all of that kind of stuff. You had a soap opera backdrop with two different hitmen dating Stanford's daughter at the time. Crazy, crazy stuff that you can't make it up more bizarre than it was. And sitting on the outside watching all this is Joey Merlino and his faction uh, soaking it all up, and then we'll get to some violence during that, too. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing that came out of this is Joey won the war by default because the feds took Stanford and that organization off the street. Competition gone. Yeah, right, and Joey just was, he was away on a probation violation, came back, and just kind of moved into the top spot along with Ralph Natale, and that created a whole other situation that, you know, this is a saga, an ongoing saga, but the Stanford trial, which is the 15th anniversary of that, his conviction this month. The Stanford trial, I think, was a seminal event in the history of the Philadelphia underworld. All right, now, there was a murder during that trial. Right before John Vesey took the stand, his brother Billy was assassinated in South Philadelphia on his way to work uh, a couple of hours before John right. was going to take the stand. John uh, shrugged that off to some extent and came back and testified for four or five days, cross-examination, all those kinds of things. That was an interesting mark in history here, too. Absolutely. I think the shoot 
shooting instead of intimidating John Beasley made him a stronger witness. The other twist on that shooting was when it happened, everybody assumed this was coming from the Stanford faction because Vizi was in fact testifying against Stanford. In fact, according to the feds, it came from the Molino faction, which is out on the streets, and they were making a point, if you cooperate, you and your family are at risk. And that's the point that was made with all of that. Right, interesting. VZ tells it that the feds actually told him that it did come from Stanford at the beginning and then changed course. Either they didn't know at the time, that's what there was their theory, or they were trying to, I guess, embolden him as he took the witness stand. I think it was probably the former. I don't think anybody at the time went down. The assumption was this came from the Stanford people. As things played out, it became more and more obvious that it wasn't the Stanford people. It was the Molino faction. And no doubt it emboldened him because he slam dunk those guys. The best witness of all the witnesses I've seen, and I've seen a lot of mob witnesses, he was, I think, by far the best in terms of his delivery in terms of what he brought to the table. All right, George, let's look at this from the federal perspective. They've had some big wins, a couple of losses. This falls in the category of a big win. Absolutely. I think originally there were 26 defendants in this case, and I think 23 either were convicted or pled guilty, so that's pretty much across the board. Okay, that's it for Mob Talk this week. See you next week.